So I want to talk about uh, freedom today, and you guys know my, one of my pet peeves uh, is safety. Uh, the legislation of safety uh, is demonic. Now, I'm, I'm just not afraid to say it the way I see it. And uh, you don't have to believe the same thing I believe to go here. Amen. You don't have to believe the same thing I believe. I just ask you to consider the biblical side of what I'm saying. All I want you to do is consider what God says about this. Amen? You consider what God says, and if you come in in agreement with God, you win. Amen? So, we're big talkers about freedom in this society. I hear everybody talking big stuff about freedom. We say we, we want and love freedom. Then we put ourselves in bondage to some law. Watch out. We do. We put ourselves in bondage of some stinking law that we conjure up. I'll tell you what. You ever been part of a, 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 an organization like, you know, we're part of the Rodeo Association for years and we do all this stuff. My dad was a big Kiwanian. You know, we, we do all this different, different thing. Your family was in the Kiwanis big time and, and all, all the different th- little groups. When every time you get in a group like that and something dumb happens, you ever know something dumb happens when you get around a bunch of people? <laughs> Why? Because we're people. And every time these guys come up, some guy went off one day and he was doing all this stuff at the rodeo, and they said, well, we're going to put that in the bylaws. I said, you're going to put what in the bylaws? That they, that they can't do that here at Evergreen Rodeo. I said, it's never come up before. In 57 years, it's never come up before. We're not putting it in the bylaws. Thank you. And I mean, I'm just a board member now. I was a chairman for years. But it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm saying that. I said, no, we're not doing that. And I said, does anybody else want to put it in the bylaws? And everybody went, no. We're not putting it in the Bible. You don't need to make a law because something dumb happens. You should be smart enough to keep yourself safe. Hmm. Hmm. My kids hated the big R word. We called it responsibility. They hated big R. Every time they, you know, were whining around and something wasn't working, I said, big, you're not using big R. You're not responsible for what you should be responsible for, and you should be responsible for your own safety. You don't need some law about it. Hello. You say amen, I preach better. (laughs) Deep down, it seems to me that most people don't want freedom. They want to be safe. Uh, I mean, really. They want to be safe. And I don't have anything about say I don't want to be unsafe. What do you think I'm saying that? I'm not saying that. Please don't think that. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater when some preacher says something. Just look at it. Just look at it. I didn't say just agree with it. I said look at it. Consider it. Pray over it and say, Lord, is that true? Show me in your word. Amen? You can, you can see all this in the word. Americans especially are worried about physical safety more than anything else. Did you see it during COVID? Hmm? More than anything else. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're going to mask up and run. Look out. We're scared. We legislate safety and I truly believe it takes freedom away with everything in me. Thank you, Sam. And uh, I'm going to be reporting this for a while. The, the offering is $1,925. Thank you, Lord. That's amazing. That's amazing from this group of uh, a small amount of people. But we are blessed. Amen. So uh, we're going to keep on going here. Uh, So you say, 
Like what? Like what? We legislate safety, and I pr truly believe it takes freedom away. That was the statement. And you say, like what? Like what? How about, I like this one, fireworks. <laughs> I do. I, I, I like it. Fireworks. I hope you are not dumb enough to shoot pop bottle rockets in a dry forest. Yeah. Hello? God help anybody that's that dumb. Amen. There's a lot of them out there. Oh, they are. Where do they come from, these people? I don't know where they came from. Now I'll get on another one that's big for me, guns. Some people are so dumb, they think guns kill people. Guns do not kill people. People use weapons against people, and people use firearms against people. I don't even call them uh, weapons. I call them firearms because a weapon is something that kills people. Is that true, uh, uh, Dr. Gunman back there in the back? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much because, guys, we don't, we, you don't want them to outlaw our guns. Only the out, if you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. They're not getting them more. All they do is take them away from the good people. You know, the good people, okay, we'll surrender our guns. Not me, honey. I ain't surrendering my gun. You had to shoot me to take it. Yeah, that's the way. And I believe in having guns. And I, I have guns, and I'm not ashamed of it. And that's part of the deal. Amen. And I'm a hunter. And I don't want to kill people. Amen. You know, the Bible says, and this is where some other people get really hung up. The Bible says, uh, and, and we quote this, people quote this all the time, thou shalt not kill. You know, it doesn't say that. It says thou shalt not murder. That is what it's talking about. There is a time. What, then if, the, if that's true, then Ecclesiastes 3 is a contradiction to the word. It says in Ecclesiastes 3, that's not part of my notes. It, 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 it's a, there, there's a time to kill. That's right. yes. Come on. Yep. There is a time to kill. You come in my house, you mess with my wife, you're going down, honey. Right. You mess with my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids, my church people, you're going down. I'm sorry, you're going down. A terrorist tries to get you, they're going down. That's right. Amen. Hello. Amen. Or we die trying. Because there is, and it also says in Ecclesiastes 3 that there's a time to fight. There is a time to fight. Now, I'm not talking, it's not church. We tell people, if you want to fight, join the army. We're not here to fight. The only thing we fight is the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. And we believe God has given us enough wisdom to know how to protect our own. We know how to protect our own, and we will. Amen. You guys with it? That's what this foundation that we're building right here is about. Amen. You guys are foundational pillars. That's what you are. Amen. Come on. And then we want to, uh, helmet, helmet laws. Helmet laws. We had this guy years ago, and uh, some of you remember him. He was on our praise team, and uh, he would come in and he, he was just an old hippie, you know? And he wore, he wore a hat that says, helmet laws suck. <laughs> he was a motorcycle guy, come on. And, and, and you know what? Somebody, somebody didn't want him wearing that in the church. And I wasn't the pastor then, but um, a bunch of people got after him about it. And it made, him, made me really sad because he left. And that was really sad. He could come here and wear that hat. I don't care. Because I believe they suck too. Because you ought to be smart enough. You're going to ride a motorcycle down a concrete highway. If you're going to ride that bike, you ought to get a helmet on. And if not, it's your deal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's your deal. You ought to have enough sense to wear a helmet or not wear a helmet. Huh? It's your deal. Absolutely. 
That's right, it's my deal. I chose to ride a motorcycle. I choose to wear a helmet or not. You ought to be smart enough to do whatever you're supposed to do. You might want to be smart enough to wear boots and shaps when you ride a bike too, you know? Hello? Come on. Huh? Short pants and uh, flip-flops. I see guys on motorcycles like that. It's like, no. Anyway, uh, this is another big one. Smoking. Smoking, I hate cigarettes. I watched two of my grandfathers drown in their own lungs because of cigarettes. I watched them die, both of them. Two of my grandfathers died from that stuff, and I hate smoking, I hate it. But let me tell you what, you live in America, and if you wanna smoke, it's up to you. And there's no thing in the Bible that says that you shall not smoke. It doesn't say that. There's nothing in there. You, you know, you might meet Jesus sooner than some of us because you do, and it might kill you, and it's bad for you, and I hate it, and I don't want to see it. I believe my mom would still be alive today if she didn't have, wasn't a chain smoker. You know, I really do, and, and, and all that. I've seen so many people do it. And we don't hate smokers. We do not hate smokers. If you smoke, I'm not against you. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not your judge, and I'm not your nanny. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? And this church isn't going to nanny anybody. If somebody goes outside and lights up, leave them alone. It's not your deal. Amen? It's their choice. Right. Amen? Just, just bad for you, that's all. Amen? Uh, one of our favorite sayings in this country, and it always has been since I was a little kid, we ought to outlaw that. <laughs> yeah? Come on. Do we really mean it? Or is that what's coming out of our hearts? We love the law if we hate what they outlaw. Huh? Come on. See, I love it when you go into a restaurant. I don't have to smell cigarettes. I love it. That's why I like that. That's a blessing to me. Tafalino is one of our favorite little Mexican restaurants for years. They had the smoking side. And you go in there, and that's what you get hit with. First thing, boom. It was like, whoa, I hate that. So they outlawed it. Now I don't have to deal with that anymore. That's good for me. But it's junk. If those people want to let people smoke in their restaurant, it's up to them. It's up to me whether I go there or not. Right. Hello? There's nobody that dumb and can still walk. If you think we have to do that, if you think we have to do that, Robin's, Robin's questioning that thought. But. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what Sharon was saying. It's true. But if it benefits us, we're for it. Let's look at a few scriptures here. Romans 8, uh, verse 21. I didn't write these out. I just, I know that, that, that uh, this is a big deal. But see, that's what we're trying to change in our nation. People making stupid laws. Hmm? Uh, let's go to uh, New King James, Jim. Uh, New King James, verse 21 says, where'd you go, where'd you go? Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Liberty means freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's where I'm going next. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Let me tell you guys, these are life changers. Time just goes too fast. I know. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the spirit. Somebody asked me the other day, Who do I pray to? The Father? The Son or the Holy Ghost? I said, yes. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Ghost is inside of you, so he's the closest. Did you know that's why we bow our heads to pray? Hey, Holy Ghost, how you doing? I'm 
Amen. Come on. That's true. That's the truth. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are free in Christ. Amen. We are free. Galatians uh, Galatians 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, which is the law. Thank you. Yeah, that's the law. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Thank you. What is grace? God's unmerited favor and his ability working in and through us. Amen. Amen. Listen, when we're surrendered to God, you've got it made. You're blessed. You're safe. You can do anything. Amen. Amen. Anything. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Does anybody believe that with me? Come on, man. That is awesome. Now let's go back to Romans uh, chapter 6. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Remember that song? I love that song. Romans 6 and verse 18 says, And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. <laughs> you want to be a slave, honey? There's a good one for you. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Paul said. Anybody know what he's talking about there? Hmm. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Isn't that just a a, 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 a great exchange right there. I exchanged that old way where I was just a messed up goof. <laughs> In that old way that I, I was a slave to sin. Now I'm a slave to righteousness. Amen? A slave to his freedom. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. When you were slaves of sin... You were free in regard to righteousness. <laughs> I love that. Don't you? You were free from righteousness when you were a slave of sin. Wow. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? Wow. For the end of those things is death. Right? But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. <coughs> if that isn't the best news you've ever heard, I don't know how to help you. Somebody ought to just jump up and do a backflip. Amen, brother. Amen. Okay. Do you want to see me do it again? Thank you. How was that? <laughs> Sam said, slow it down. You guys didn't see those backflips there so fast. <laughs> I do them in my mind. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Are you blessed or what? See, we were designed to be free, to, to live making our own choices and being responsible. Yep. You were designed for that, amen? amen? The gospel made us free from the law of sin and death. The gospel made us free from the tyrants. We d now listen, rebellion is bad. I'm telling you what, we should not be a rebellious bunch. We should not. We're not talking about being rebellious. We're talking about all out warfare against the devil. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. And being rebellious. 
You shouldn't re be rebellious. You shouldn't drive 90 down 285. Well, now I tell you. <laughs> that when the state trooper, our good buddy, the state trooper, what was that guy's name, Sam? That went here? Remember? Uh, Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, the state trooper, he, wor he worked this road for several years. And uh, he told me one day he doesn't even pull anybody over unless they were doing 75. He said, I said, why? He says, well, I, those, that's the easiest ones to get. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> All we're free to make every cho any choice we want. God gave us a will, and he made it a free will. You have free will. Freedom is not an excuse to do things that are not godly. Hello? The, the only freedom there is is where the Spirit of the Lord is. The, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. If He's not there, if He's not in it, there isn't freedom. Yay! And that's how this country was founded. Freedom is a gift of the gospel that encourages us to make responsible decisions. Amen? See, we're about making responsible decisions, not being fools. Life is decision after decision. It's time for us to choose freedom and let safety be a responsible choice for each and every person. Come on. Amen? Really? I mean, anybody that would do the freedom thing with the uh, with the colleges, that you have to get into a college by merit. And if you don't, you shouldn't go to college. Or you should get enough education to get you there so you can. Hey Amen? I'm all for that. My goodness. I believe we can have our cake and eat it too. If our freedom has moved us toward God, ultimately, we'll be safe as well. Amen? amen. Is, is that right? We'll be safe, amen? We will be safe if we're in God. Amen? God's my protector. Amen? amen? Not the government. Right. Amen? amen? Not laws. God is my protector. If our freedom moves us away from God, our safety's gone. It doesn't just diminish, just diminish it's gone. We don't have any. When safety is a priority, we lose our freedom. Because Jesus needs to be the priority. Hmm? When freedom is what is important, safety is one of its benefits. That's pretty cool, amen? Jesus went to the cross to make us free. He rose from the dead to give us eternal life. Let me tell you, that's safety. Let me tell you, you can't lose if you're a believer. Say this with me, I'm a believer. <laughs> Amen? I say that boldly. I'll do one more scripture. I know, we're gonna go outside. You guys okay for another minute? You guys gonna be okay for four more hours? Yes. I'm just kidding. I won't do that to you. John, where's John? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, there you are. John chapter eight and verse 32, it says, and you shall know the truth. What? You shall know the truth. And it shall set you free. And the truth shall make you free. But let me tell you, honey, you gotta know it first. Amen. You've got to know the truth in order for it to work. If you don't know the truth, you're in trouble. Amen? Tell Mona we're going outside in five minutes. Anybody? If somebody wants to run downstairs faster than Chris, it'll be all right. Come on, Chris. I'm not dissing you. I'm trying to save you. In verse 33, it says, They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Amen? Amen. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. There's no safety like living in our Father's house forever. Come on. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has made us free and safe. Knowing the truth of the gospel assures us a safety, freedom, righteousness, and a life full of adventure and victory. You have victory. You know the truth. You be in the Word. That's what we're doing. We're studying the Word. Now, now listen. At church, if you go to a class, if you come to the service, whatever you do, that is not the end. It's the beginning. You've got to get in there for yourself, please. Please get in the Word. Use a Bible, amen? Get in there. Use the Bible. I don't care which one so much you use. Uh, I know there's everybody has a different opinion on what's the best one and all that. The best one is the one that works for you, but you want it to go from Genesis to Revelation, amen? Amen? A real Bible, not some goofed up thing. But a Bible, this is the truth. I, you know, my main Bible is the New King James. I learned in the Old King James. But as I started preaching out of it, a lot of people had problems. So I, I switched to this. But I still use the Old King James too. And uh, it's, it won't hurt you. Amen. A thou won't bite you. A thee won't, won't smack you or nothing. Amen. 